Hello everybody, this episode is going to be on the new updates in 2015.3 that Adobe has released. Uh, in particular, a couple uh, things that they have released were, were updates for Premiere, pretty significant updates for Premiere and for Media Encoder and a couple other, other programs as well. But I'm going to be covering the Premiere and Media Encoder updates here that's very relevant to, and in this specific portion here I'm going to be discussing their uh, proxy workflow which is actually really incredible. I've been waiting a long time for this, in fact I'm going to start up Premiere here. I've been waiting a long time for this, I've been kind of on their forums kind of saying hey you guys, you guys need this, not that I'm taking responsibility for that, there's been a lot of people asking for it and honestly I think it's really because um, Premiere's use in the in uh, on Hollywood films lately that's kind of pushed toward this uh, proxy proxy workflow. So here's a new splash screen here. If you have any previous projects, it will want to update those to the new 2015.3 version. So if you open up one of these, it's going to ask you to update it and find a location to update it there. But I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to start a new project here. And within the new project area here, you'll notice they've added a tab, and it's this ingest settings. And this is where a lot of that proxy workflow goes. And the reason behind a proxy workflow, if you're using footage that's so high quality, so if you're using like red footage or you're using 4K footage off of some drone or something like that, and you're just and you try to edit it on a laptop or a computer that's not as fast, it tends to lag and it's really difficult to edit. So a lot of times, it, uh, before you had to do kind of a bulky, weird workaround with uh, doing proxy workflow in Premiere, but now it works really well and it's 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 all included inside the software. It works between Premiere and Media Encoder now. So what you're going to do is if you want to edit, first of all, if you're editing 1920 by uh, 1080 footage and your computer's working fine, you won't have to do proxy. But if you're doing 4K stuff and uh, red footage, Alexa footage, it's going to take a toll on a, a regular system that doesn't have a lot of beefy hardware, and you're going to want to edit offline or prox with proxy footage. And then once you get your edit done, you relink it to the original footage, which is incredibly simple in Premiere now. So I'm going to check mark this in jest here, and we're going to say, yes, I'm going to be doing a proxy workflow project here. Now, the reason they've got this copy here is because if you just get through shooting on a camera, you stick your SD card in or your uh, solid state card into the, into the computer. You can start editing immediately without having to copy it over first. Premiere will copy it uh, to the folder that you ask. Premiere will copy it over to the folder that you specify. And uh, so you can be editing right off the SD card, but then once everything has been moved over, uh, it basically starts referencing the stuff moved over to the computer's hard drive. So this is kind of nice. I probably won't use this a ton, usually with assistant editors and other people will just have the footage transferred off. But when we ingest it though, I'm going to want to do a definite create proxy. And there's also, you've got transcode, so let's, let's go through these really quick. You've got copy, that just copies the footage over and doesn't do any sort of proxy footage. Transcode, if you are, say you're working in like a ProRes workflow or something like that, if you're working with a Blackmagic and you're shooting everything in ProRes, and then you have some DSLR footage that's uh, H.264 and you want to stay, keep everything in the same kind of optimized media workflow, you can transcode all the new footage that you bring in to whatever you tell it to, whatever type of codec you're going to be working with. So we can move on down, we can just create proxies if we want to. And this is probably the one I'm going to be using the most here. This assumes that you've copied your footage over to the hard drive already. And then you do create proxies, it's going to uh, make a, a lesser quality version that's still very nice quality to look at. Uh, so you can edit it easily, but your computer will speed up and edit it quickly, and then you can relink it to the high quality footage when you're finished. And then of course if you plug your, your SD card in right off your camera, you can do copy and create proxies. It'll start copying it over, and once it's copied it over, it will start creating the proxies for you, and you can just start editing right away while this process is happening in the background. And while you're editing, it actually pauses things so it doesn't actually uh, take a toll on your system. And then when you when you pause, then it starts transferring and starts creating proxies. So uh, let's do this. We're going to do create proxies. And then you have some uh, basic options here. And some of these I don't like. So usually uh, I'm, I'm working on uh, computers. 720 is actually really good. Uh, the, the Cineform is actually really good optimized media here. Uh, to work with, but notice that the uh, resolution is a 720 resolution. They don't have a 1920 by 1080 option here, which you can do if you're. But if you're working on a laptop, I really recommend using 720. Uh, one codec that I really like working with lately has been the DNX codec. It's incredibly smooth, it's incredibly optimized, and it works really, really well. That option is not here, so you do have this option over here to add an ingest preset. But before we get started here, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder for my location. I'm going to do browse. I'm going to find. I'm going to create a new folder on my hard drive here. Right click, do a new folder. I'm just going to name this proxy practice just for something to practice with. 
proxy practice. I'm going to double click on this. And if all my media was in here, it's not right now. I'm going to be borrowing it from other folders. It would be a nicely organized project. I recommend keeping everything in the same folder that you're doing, having all the folder. But if you're working on a big server where you're and you're borrowing uh, footage from a, a whole bunch of different folders, then that would be a little bit different. This would still kind of work the same. I'm going to put a new folder inside of proxy practice. Actually, it's not necessary since all my footage is in here, but I'm going to just call this my proxy folder. If you're editing everything within one folder, you'll probably want a proxy folder than all of your regular media inside of that. Actually, I'm going to save my project in here. So let's save my project. I'm just going to call this proxy practice because that's what we're doing. And then down here, you can choose a proxy destination here and you can choose your location. And I'm actually going to choose that folder right there. Select folder, proxy practice. I'll just call this project so I know it's a project file, which I usually do. And I'm going to hit OK. But notice that my ingest settings were not exactly where I want them. What you can do, and this is really nice, I'm going to open up Media Encoder and I'm going to make my custom uh, proxy workflow file. And the reason why it's important to do a custom one is say you're working in different aspect ratios. Say you have a red camera you're shooting and let maybe like a, um, a, a 1.85 aspect ratio and then you have a DSLR that you're mixing in with it and the DSLR shoots 16 by 9 or 1.77 to 1 aspect ratio. So if you have different aspect ratios, you can tell what you want it to encode all the proxy to. And I'm going to say, okay, I, I want my project to end up as a 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that aspect ratio here. I'm going to go down, I'm going to go under, I'm going to create one of my own presets here. So I'm going to go up to my little create preset, new preset button here and say create ingest preset. Now we are not transferring the file, so we can ignore this, but we're going to transcode the files to a destination here. So I'll check mark this, do browse for location, find my location, I'm going to go to my proxy practice and my proxy folder right there, that's where all my proxy media will be put to. I'm going to choose my format and I'm going to do DNX, which is a really nice format, uh, Avid codec format that's really smooth and optimized, it edits really nicely, choose that. And I'm going to choose a uh, 1920 by 1080. By the way, if you don't have a lot of these formats, you can go to Avid's uh, website and download their, their package for free and install it on PC and Mac. But I'm going to go to DNX, SQ is a little lower quality than HQX, but this edits really, really fast. And I'm going to keep all my frame rate at 23.976. Now, if you have mixed frame rates, that's a whole different issue. But I'm not going to go through that right now. I'm going to conform everything. When you're shooting, you should try to maintain all your same frame rates, and that will aid your workflow. If you don't, you have to conform footage to different frame rates, which can be kind of a pain. So I'm going to choose DNX 1080 and 23.976 24 frames per second drop frame. I've got my location chosen. I can hit OK and it has added that preset right here. I forgot to name it so I'm going to go to preset settings and name it up here. That's the, probably the first thing you should do actually is name this. I'm going to name this red and DSLR and my aspect ratio uh, actually has been conformed to 1920 by 1080, which is fine because it will letterbox it uh, while you're doing proxy, which doesn't bother me. Uh, if you want to do that, you have to go in and change your aspect ratio here. And I'm going to hit OK here. But uh, in the end, it will relate to the high quality footage and everything will be honky dory. So there's my preset right there. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to export presets. So I'm going to save this preset as something that you could send this preset file off to anybody else editing and everybody can have the same project if you're working, if multiple people are working on it and uh, they can import it really easily and uh, do the same proxy workflow that you're working with. So I'm going to go to proxy practice. I'm going to save it in here. My DSLR it saves it as this EPR file. We're going to save and go back to Premiere. Now I can go up to File, go down to My Project Settings, and you'll notice Ingest Settings has been added here. Here's those th same three tabs that have been added to your projects. Settings, go to Ingest Settings, and I'm going to add an Ingest Preset. I'm going to find that location, it's right there. Choose that, and Open, and it has added that uh, as my preset. It's got all the information right there. I'm going to hit OK, and it's done. So now we can start importing footage. I'm going to go to my Media Browser, hit my tilde over this to expand it. We're going to go go into my hard drive here. And by the way, to navigate quickly with these, you can use your arrows down to go down and find your folder, and arrow right to open up a folder, and arrow left will close it. So I'm going to arrow right, go down to day one, grab some red footage. And actually, here's a good example because we've got red footage and Sony footage. So I'm going to grab all this red footage here. So I'm going to grab day two because that stuff's in a car so we can see the footage a little bit better. So here's all my red footage. I'm going to hit Control-A, select everything, right-click, and import. It'll import all these files. I go back to my project window and one thing is uh, you might want to be able to keep track of proxy encoding. A couple things you can do to keep track of your proxy encoding here. Uh, first of all, there's a new tab they've added here that's not sh shown right here. You can uh, basically go up to your little uh, project window settings here and go to metadata display. 
you can scroll down or actually it's under Premiere Pro project metadata I'm going to scroll downtown and uh, check mark proxy under this Premiere Pro project metadata hit OK it has added it up here you don't see it yet because it is all the way down here I'm going to grab this and drag it a little closer so I can kind of keep track of things scroll this back over I'm going to put it all the way over here just so I can see it and keep a close eye on it right there so I've got this all the way over to the side and right now it says that these are all offline that doesn't mean your media is offline it means your proxy footage is offline it hasn't encoded them yet right now it's working on it I'm going to hit my tilde key again bring that down and we're going to go up to to test the progress we're going to go to window and we're going to go to progress right down here they've added this new window that adds it on right here and shows your files encoding here and you can see your files completing in the progress window here now one's complete one it, once it is complete that file is complete you'll notice it now it says attached your media file is now attached to the proxy file right there it's attached to it so we've got two copies of this file here one high quality and one proxy quality and all these others will show us offline now what this is doing in the background here is actually you'll notice media encoder is going down here if I open up media encoder this basically sends the footage over to media encoder and starts encoding them for you based on those presets on the all and all those ingest presets that we did and it does this automatically just sends it over and starts encoding them let's go back to Premiere select this clip here we've got a 4096 by 2160 file let's go to the calculator and I'm going to divide I'm going to see what aspect ratio we have here I'm going to go 4096 divided by 2160 and we have a 1.89 so I was saying 1.85 so it's actually 1.89 so we've got a 1.89 to 1 aspect ratio which is kind of the, the beginning cinema aspect ratio and say we want a project in 1.89 but we got to mix in some DSLR footage so I'm going to grab all this footage here and I'm going to put it in a folder call that red fo folder so I've got my red footage in there you can organize this however you want but I'm going to import some DSLR footage so I'm going to import actually I'm going to import some 1920 by 1080 uh, DSLR or it's not DSLR footage it's Sony footage older uh, Sony F3 footage that they use as a B camera but this is 1920 by 1080 it's less it's less quality I'm going to encode this anyway I'm going to leave the encoder on it's not high enough quality necessarily to worry about it but I'm going to do it anyway just to facilitate things and make it easier so I'm going to grab all this stuff right click import it will transcode it the Sony footage really doesn't need to be but I'm going to do it anyway just so it's all so it's all in the same codec here I'm going to grab my footage drag it to my folder make a new folder and we'll call this Sony notice that these are saying offline and the red footage is still encoding and actually you could start editing right here and let me show you you could grab a file now I want my aspect ratio ratio based off of my red footage notice this is 1920 by 1080 if you divide that on the calculator it ends up being 1.77 to 1 or 16 by 9 if you round it up to whole numbers uh, but this is 1.89 to 1 it's a wider aspect ratio and I like that cinema aspect ratio we're going to conform all these later on to that aspect ratio but I'm going to grab my red footage create a timeline based off of the red footage settings let's go under here I'm going to grab my timeline drag it out of my folders name my folder I'll just call it edit right now really simple stuff right now open that up and here is my red footage but right now this red footage is not using the proxy footage this is actual red footage right now so this when I play it back will start getting laggy and actually while that's encoding I'm going to show you kind of the next step here next step that you need to do so you can switch between proxies and and uh, the high quality footage you're going to go to this little plus button on your uh, program viewer let me put this into regular editing mode here Okay, we're back to our regular editing editing view here. I'm going to go down to this little plus button. We're going to add an icon. They've added something under the button, button editor, and it is this little proxy button right here to toggle between your timeline between proxies and the high quality footage. This is really nice and quick. It's just a really super quick step. I'm going to grab this, drag it down here, hit OK, and there we go. And right now, since it's not blue, this is on the original footage. If you do have proxy footage in here, which uh, I'm not sure if this one's gotten there yet, you just hit this button and it will change this and it did it changed the proxy footage there and now we can edit with a proxy footage when we go back to the original see and I kind of did a bad, bad aspect ratio here did them all 1920 by 1080 uh, but you can conform them to the right aspect ratio if you want, wish and what you would want to do if you want it like half the resolution you would divide your 4096 by 2 you would divide 4096 by 2 divided by 2 you and you would end up with 2048 and then we divide 2160 by two, so it'd be 2048 by 1080, and you'd get the right aspect ratio. And I didn't do that on my preset, so right now it's showing up as letterboxes. Conformed it to 1920 by 1080, and added these letterboxes to squeeze that in. 
Right now that is reading the proxy footage, and as I play, it plays really smooth, it's really, really fast, and plays back really fast. Um, so now I can switch between the high quality footage and the proxy footage with the wrong aspect ratio. But uh, that's, the, that's the first process here. Uh, I'm going to let this finish encoding, and then we'll come back and finish. This is finishing the last clip right now. Let's go over to our little editor here and look at our red footage and everything in our red footage. And everything in our red footage is attached. Here's our Sony footage and everything is here in our Sony footage is attached. So everything is attached to proxies now. So I can go to Media Encoder. I can actually close that now and save my project. And we can start editing. So this hasn't been synced or anything. I don't have synced audio. But anyway, I just uh, want to show you kind of the attachment and reattachment. Uh, function here. Let's go open up some footage here, kind of skim in, and grab a grab a clip, an endpoint, play through it. This is our this is our red footage here. So I'll put an endpoint, out point, period. We drop that into our timeline, and we have our proxy turned on. So right now I can tell because I've got these letter boxes here. Interesting thing will happen because my Sony footage is actually 1920 by 1080. So let's uh, open up a Sony clip here and skim into it and just grab a clip here. Not going to really go for continuity or matching here, just to kind of show how the workflow works. Out point. Actually, we'll put it before. Go for a teeny bit of continuity right there. So we've got our Sony footage, which has an audio clip attached to it. And keep in mind, this timeline is still in a, a 4K uh, timeline space here. One thing I could have done before I imported the footage, which I did not do, is go into Preferences, General, and you can tell it to default scale to frame size when you import footage. And whenever you import footage from now on, it's going to default scale to uh, to the frame size of what you're editing in. I'm going to right click on this and tell it to scale to the frame size right now so I can add it. And notice it's got the letter boxes on the side here and here. Because uh, that's 1920 trying to fit into a um, into a 1.89 aspect ratio, a little bit at wider aspect ratio. As we play through it, um, now we have our footage in here where we can go ahead and do our edit. Editing will be really super fast. It will play through really super fast. Uh, when you're done, you just go over and hit this toggle proxies, click, and it goes back to the original footage. Notice that our 1920 by 1080 footage is still letterboxed or on the sides here. And now our red footage matches this timeline just perfectly. This is 1.89 to 1. We can uh, when this will have to be fixed in post. If you use mixing cameras and different uh, aspect ratios and formats, you're going to have to in color in, in color correction and post. If you're sending it to DaVinci Resolve, you can do quick, easy zooms on these things to frame uh, clip by clip, which you have to do. Or you can go to effect controls here and you can scale this up. Let's go 105 maybe. 107 will probably do it. 107 will take that right to the edge, and you can reframe this if you need to. You have a little bit of room to reframe if you need to. And now my 1920 by 1080 fits within that window there if you are mixing aspect ratios. There we go. And, it's all, and now this has to be colored to match. Let's do a quick color to match. I'm going to go to my scopes here. I'm going to tell this to show RGB prayed. Let's get rid of our regular waveform monitor there. And look at the colors between these two. And this one has a higher push in the red. So we're going to go up to our basic correction. I'm going to grab the temperature and pull that down so it changes the color temperature a little bit. Go to the curves. Grab my red, bring down the highlights in the red, bring that down to match kind of the other uh, blue there, and let's see if those kind of match a little closer. They're closer. This is a little bit brighter, but we got the color temperature a little bit closer. This has a higher push in the blue. Grab our blue, drag that down a little bit. These uh, color correctors are incredible inside of Premiere. Love them. Um, if you're not using, if you're using a smaller project, you don't have to use DaVinci Resolve, then then this is a really good way to go. Right by there, basic color matching there. Let's add a little bit of brightness to this one. A little bit of exposure to this one to match the exposure. Bring the exposure down on this one a little, little, little bit. We cut to shot to shot. Starting to match. Needs a little bit of work, but add a quick contrast to each one. Contrast. And awesome. Anyway, uh, yeah, we go all day on the color correction stuff, but there you go. That is the new uh, kind of proxy workflow. Very simple. I will be posting a, a, a a kind of a full-on workflow with proxy uh, in the next few weeks here. I'm going to get prepared. I'm going to actually do a project on this new feature, and then after I'm done with that, I will come back and show you complete workflow from beginning to end and show you all the kind of tips and, and tricks with it and uh, so you have a nice steady workflow from beginning to end. But uh, that's that feature. Enjoy. And the next, I do have another episode that shows the HSL secondary that has also been added in their new updates. So watch that episode as well if you want. And this is a very powerful tool here as well in their color correction and their Elementary panel. So um, 
watch the next episode. Thanks.